In my search for former Wallaby stars over the months, I haven't had to get off the beaten track. But that's all changed now because I'm just outside Gunnedah in rural New South Wales and I managed to track down one of our greatest ever Wallaby number eights, Bryant Tim Gavin, better known as Tim. Nice to see you. G'day, Clark, and welcome to the Liverpool Plains. It is great to be here, and I've got to say, it's a far cry from running around those great rugby stadiums of the world. Well, it is a far cry, but it's nonetheless challenging at times as well. So, uh, no, it's, it's wonderful to be back in the bush. Um, I, I was brought up in the bush, went to Sydney and played my rugby, and, and have returned. And um, this is where we make our life now. Australia going for the push over here. Gavin controls. It's very close. It's a try! Tim Gavin! Lovely hands from Little. Liner. Horan. Oh, look at Gavin! The big man! How did he pick it up? Tim, you played 47 tests for Australia from 88 to 96, scoring nine tries. One of the highlights was the 40 to 15 win over England in Sydney in 1991. Now, Coach Bob Dwyer reckons it was one of the best ever Wallaby performances in his era, and many people believe it was one of, if not your best effort as a Wallaby. A special day that day. Well, it was very special. England were uh, Six Nations champions. They had a wonderful back road, and. Um, Everything we did just came off. We, we uh, really worked on some back row play. We developed back row play and uh, sort of were changing the game, I felt, at that stage, incorporating both backs and forwards in various plays off scrums and lineouts. And um, everything just worked. Um, you know, it, it was wonderful to, to be a part of it. It, it was a, a great period in uh, Australian rugby building towards the 91 World Cup. You hurt your knee in a club game and you were ruled out of the 91 World Cup. That must have been devastating at the time. You know, I'm pretty philosophic about things like that. Everyone has a uh, bad injury in their, in their career, pretty much. It was just bad timing. But, um, you know, I, <laughs> I uh, was able to cement my relationship with my wife at that stage. Uh, we'd only just met just before that. And uh, so, you know, there was a bit of fate there. One by Earl. Troy! Australia's got one! Tim it hasn't gone to Kearns, it's gone to Timmy Gavin. And that's his first try at the stadium, his first try in a test outside Ballymore. Now, you had a few wins against the All Blacks in Bledisloe Cup tests, like 91 in Sydney, when you scored a try. Any win against New Zealand is good, isn't it? Well, it's always good to beat the old foe, and, uh, you know, they're always tough encounters. Um, you have to be, everything has to be going right for you on the day to beat them. You know, they just don't give an inch. And um, it is the pinnacle of our sport to play against them, I feel, um, anywhere, anytime. And, uh, you know, if you can sneak one away from them, it's always good. You were named a classic Wallaby statesman in 2011 and you earned 83 caps as a Waratah, captaining the side 30 times, including the inaugural Super Rugby years in 96 and 97. And this year, you were appointed president of the New South Wales Rugby Union. That's a great honour. Well, it is a great honour. And, um, you know, the president, I guess, is the figurehead of um, the organisation. Um, I'm very lucky that I'm involved with uh, Nick Farr-Jones as the chairman of New South Wales Rugby. Um, the professional game is run by Waratah Rugby, uh, where, where we basically concentrate on the community side of rugby. And that's very important to the, both the support of the Waratahs and, and obviously for people playing the game in general. Well, how's life away from rugby? Life on the farm? Well, it does have its moments, but it, look, it's a wonderful lifestyle. I mean, um, you know, to have your place of work at your back doors, not too bad. Um, you know, my family, I've got three boys. There's plenty of room for them to run around. They have a wonderful time on the farm. The place is, uh, you know, about 12,000 acres and um, we're involved in some country up at Barra where there's about 28,000 acres up there, which is all cattle, so it keeps you, it keeps you pretty busy. Um, we, we grow mostly wheat, cotton, um, sorghum, sunflowers here on the Liverpool Plains amongst uh, some other sort of smaller crops, mung beans and such. It's one of the real food bowls of uh, New South Wales and, and Australia. And um, no, I just love being here and being involved back in the land. Well, Tim Gavin, it's been a pleasure catching up with you. Thanks for the memories and thanks for all the good work you're still doing in rugby. Thanks, Clarkie.